Okay. All right, so we now look at uh, FedEx. Well, I'm looking at FedEx, you will see that uh, current asset is summarizing because the focus is not current asset, but it's on fixed assets. So you have the aircraft and related equipment. Uh, professor. Yes. Uh, how how the goodwill can be uh, you know uh, measured? Well, it maybe it's outside the scope but of uh, this, but it's good. It's a good question. Excellent question. Goodwill. Uh, goodwill. The number of ways we can measure goodwill. One of the noticeable uh, way of measuring goodwill, for example, I want. I I'm I'm going to uh, the market. When I talk of market, I mean uh, stock market. I want to buy the whole of Apple. And they tell me, well, Apple is going for five billion. That is when I take when I buy all the shares, it's going for five billion. Well, I say, wow, okay, five billion. Because I don't want anybody else uh, to challenge me as well as this Apple is concerned. That's okay. Instead of five billion, I'm going to pay six point five billion. I'm going to pay six point five billion so that nobody can challenge me. I know most people will be conservative and say, okay, no, we paid exactly that 5 million that Apple is worth. I'm paying 6.5 billion. So I have a difference of 1.5 billion extra I have paid. So what will that be? That will go to goodwill. So the goodwill here is 1.5 billion. Did I make myself clear? Yes, the professor. Yeah. So in terms of goodwill, if I'm buying, if you are buying a company, that is where goodwill really come in. But two, if I'm, if the person is paying exactly five billion, there may be other things that are measurable, like the customers of Apple. That may be that may generate what we call goodwill. Also, so this one I've told you at least we can see it that yes, extra one point five billion was paid for Apple. But there are some other goodwill you may not even see, like good customer service, like good customers that we have customers, big customers base. That may be goodwill. So when you buy the Apple, you also buy that goodwill because the customers all will follow the new owner of the business. So there are so many things that can generate goodwill. Any other question there? Okay. One of the things I want you to take note of, then I will mention other things, then we'll go off today because I'm not going to continue. I'm not feeling very well. Um, is uh, fixed asset turnover. Fixed asset turnover. In most of the things we have done, you have seen there are so many ratios. And the way we now present this ratio, as we go into any of those aspects, we mentioned the ratios evolve. Here we have what we call fixed asset turnover, which is the ratio of net sales. Net sales, we all know what net sales is. Who can remind us again what net sales is? Who can remind us what net sales is? Uh, is it the revenue after the taxes? Huh? Revenue after the taxes? No. With okay. revenue, but it's not after the, after the taxes, that no, would be no. net income, okay. right? Net income, yes, yes, yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> if you remember, I say you always see so, net sales. Uh, so but how do you derive sales, that net sales? Uh, sales huh? will be will be the uh, uh, sales after uh, the net sales will be uh, sales after uh, the <laughs> I forgot the terms. <laughs> No, yeah, try. You are almost there. You are almost there. Try. Like if there is discounts or uh, returns. Very good. Very good. Yes. That is true. <laughs> you will see that all companies, yeah, very good. You, you've done very well. Good job. You see that almost all the companies there, because there is no statutory requirement that they will start from gross. When you sell, when the company sells, the first 
number they have is what we call gross sales. Then the thing will now go into the adjustment process. Adjustment, now you, you, when you sell, you give discount to customers. So now you have to deduct those discount. Otherwise your books will not agree. You sell 5 million out of which, out of which 10% 10, 10 of that was discount. So that means 5 million less 500,000. So that means the actual sales here will be 4.5 million. And then probably there was there was return, maybe one, two, three, four, five, or 10 customers say, oh no, because of this or that, they have their reason. Everybody have reasons that they're returning. So you get the next sales. So that's very good. So in this case, we have a very good, very powerful predictor of uh, management efficiency management efficient, efficiency. That is what this ratio measure. Fixed asset turnover equals to net sales. That is operating revenue, you call it. Divide that by the net, uh, the average net fixed asset. How do we arrive to average net fixed asset? Who can try? How do we arrive at that average net fixed assets? Can I try? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, uh, I think it, uh, it will be the uh, asset at the beginning of the uh, calculation period or beginning of the year, plus uh, the total assets at end of the year divided by two. Very good. But there are other internal, uh, uh, internal uh, adjustments. Yeah, you got it very well. That is January, for example, January 1, 20, let us say 2021, because this year it has not ended. Then the end of it is December 31, 2021. So you can see net asset at this point, net fixed assets at this point, at January, you add it to net fixed assets at February, February, at the end of the, uh, the year, December, you divide it by two, that is the number you use. Because when you use balance sheet items in calculating ratio, you must always find the average. If somewhere in this, uh, in this slide, you will see where how the adjustment to uh, net fixed asset is. We will first of all say assets, in the balance sheet, you say asset at cost. Asset at cost. Asset at cost, in this case, say 5 million, for example, then less accumulated depreciation. So the focal point of this lecture will be- Can, have you, to know how can you repeat again, uh, Professor? Can you repeat again, please? Okay, I said in the balance sheet, what you will see is, asset at cost, less accumulated depreciation. You will find it in these slides, but I'm just want to wind it up and then just uh, put you through so that when we get there, we just run through it and then pass. Okay, so you have the asset at cost, 5 million. Net accumulated depreciation. Supposing accumulated depreciation is say 1.5 million. So that means uh, net fixed assets will be 3.5 million. Asset at cost is 5 million net less accumulated depreciation. Accumulated in the sense that if the asset was, was bought, we bought this asset five years ago, year one depreciation added to year two, added to year three, year four, year five, become accumulated over the five year period. You deduct it from the asset, the net, uh, the asset at cost. You arrive at the next fixed assets. So when you arrive, so you can see two stage now. First of all, we have to get to net fixed asset for January, beginning of the year. Net fixed asset at the end of the year. We don't use the cost. We don't use the gross. So now you add the two together and divide by two, we have the 
average net fixed assets. So that ratio measures the sales dollar generated per each dollar of fixed asset use. So the higher that ratio, the more effective is the management. That is where we really look at management efficiency. So that means pay assets, they are able to generate so much. So you can now see that if you keep too much as a company, you reserve too much fixed assets. You keep too much fixed assets, too much. You will see that that ratio will be completely down. Supposing let's say we make sales of $500 and our asset is 1,000 net fixed asset, you will see that this would be about uh, 0 0.5. 0 0.5, 0 0.5, okay. Okay, assuming you now, you manage your assets so well, you say, no, we don't need 1,000. Maybe we need like uh, 600. And the same level of revenue, you got 500 as revenue. So what will be the assets? What will be the, what will be the fixed asset turnover here? 500 divided by 600. Who get it? Who, who got something for me? 500 divided by 600. The first one was 0.5 because the net asset, net average net fixed asset was 1,000. But now management reduced the asset to 600 and the same level of sales revenue, 500. So what would be the fixed asset turnover in this case? 500 0 0.83. 0 0.83. You can see 0 0.83 is better than 0 0.5, correct? So 0 0.83 is better than 0 0.5. So management is more efficient in this case because their, their asset, their fixed asset turnover is now 0 point, has increased to 0 0.83. So management is becoming more efficient and effective in managing their resources. So let's look at this FedEx. FedEx here has, you can see this one is operating revenue, uh, fixed asset turnover here. They have in 2018, it was 2.42. In 2019, 2.39. And in 2020, 2.16. So if you look at it, they, they were very good in, in 2018, but it moved slightly downward in 2019, and it went further down. Who knows what will happen in uh, 2021 and 2022? Following this trend, do you think that turnover will be higher or lower? Who can answer the question? That is the analysis we do. That's, it will be lower. Yeah, it will be lower. It seems uh, the management effectiveness is going right down because they have been falling falling short. 2018 down to, to uh, 2018 down in 2019 and now down in 2020. As as a financial uh, analyst, I would say, oh, well, the management effectiveness probably in 2021 will be very low. In fact, when you look at the difference between 2018, 2020, you'll be able to predict 2021. And if you look at it, probably that will happen. Except they do something to turn around. Either they increase the sales based on the available average net asset, or they reduce the fixed assets. And as you see towards the end of the day, you know, you will talk about disposal of assets. As we acquire our assets, we dispose. So you will know when it is going to be disposed. That is when it is no longer productive. Or if it is more than the use, if it reach the useful life, you will come across what we call useful life. Useful life of the, of the equipment or assets. That is the life we expect the, the the asset to operate. After that life, that asset is almost like 
either it becomes a scrap value or zero. Any questions so far? Okay. No, Professor. Okay, that's good. Okay, let's see. Professor. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, repeat the uh, slide. Huh? Uh, repeat the slide. Slide. Uh, then first this slide. slide. This one. Yes. Yes. And when we see the fixed asset turnover, net sales divided by average net fixed asset. How do we find the net fixed asset? The net, that is what we have just talked about. I said I told you that. This is a two stage. Even the net sales is a two stage. You know, the net sales will start with gross and adjust it to net sales. We got that right. We know what to adjust to net sales. And then on the net fixed asset, we have to also adjust from where, where I call it gross or cost, uh, cost at acquisition of that asset, less accumulated depreciation that would lead to net fixed assets I, th I mentioned it before so two stage the first stage the first stage now Professor. is yes so uh, I, i'm i'm sorry uh, the average net fixed asset will be the beginning balance okay minus the depreciation plus the end balance and the result divided by two, it will give us the average net fixed assets, right? Now, the first thing you do, the then first thing you do is at the beginning of the, the financial year, January 1st, 2021. Okay. The asset at cost. What is the asset at cost? Asset at cost. That is at acquisition. What was it? At acquisition, example is that this asset was. Let me say it was um, six hundred dollars. I'm just giving you. Okay. Let's use a small example now, okay? okay. And this the asset lasted for five years. Five years from mm -hmm. two thousand. So if it is five years, I mean from two thousand what to two thousand twenty one. From two thousand sixteen. Twenty two thousand. Uh, 19, 2018, 2017, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that means, supposing the asset at cost, when we bought, purchased this asset in, on, uh, in um, 2016, we bought the asset 2016, maybe okay. December 2016, at 600, okay? And then each year, 2001 years, 2017, we depreciated $50. 18, $50. That is when uh, we use system. Professor, method. Yes. The depreciation, is it is it like uh should shouldn't shouldn't it be uh, the cost divided by the years? No, let's not go to depreciation. We'll get to okay. that slide. Okay. We'll get to that slide. But for the Purpose of uh, the illustration, assuming 50, 50, 50 uh, dollars, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50. How many? How much do we have there? One, two, three, four, five. That is two. So that means 250. 250, 250 is the accumulated depreciation. Okay. So now okay. Our, we have the asset at cost 600 less accumulated depreciation. Accumulated depreciation is uh, 250. Right. What if what if the asset was not purchased in 2016? It was purchased, for example, in 2020. So two years depreciation. That would be two 100, years. Hundred dollars. Uh, that would be for two years. Yes. Oh, okay. Very Fine. good. Okay, but in this case, I'm just assuming that, that we purchased the asset on 2016. So after one year, 2017, the asset was depreciated fifty dollars. 2018, 50. So, so this one changed the, the assets, right? So this huh? one changed this depreciation changed the uh, cost of the asset every year. So in 2017, yeah, it reduced it reduced the cost of the assets. 
So uh -huh. indirectly, it's just a book entry. Uh, physical cash is not involved. The reason for the deposition is just to make provision in the future in case they want to replace that asset. And also they want to be able to say, okay, this is actual profit contribution by that asset. So we have to reduce it from the income statement, whatever depreciation each year. So in this case, accumulated, let's look at focus on accumulated depreciation and the cost. 250. Mm -hmm. 250. 250. So if you subtract 250 from 600, what do you get? 350. 350. So 350 is now the net asset as at the beginning of that year. 350. So record also at the end of the year, at the end of the year, we will depreciate it another, uh, another 50. So the, at the end of the year, it will be 300. Am I correct? Everybody yes. with me? At the end of the year, it will be 300. No, uh, Professor, why? Why 300? Because, because as of January, we have depreciated up to, three, uh, up to 250. After one year, will you depreciate again or not? You will okay. depreciate. Yes, another yeah. 50 will be depreciated. I'm not using my examples now. So that means okay. at the end of the year, we have the asset net, net fixed cost will be 300. At the beginning, net fix, fixed cost is 350. So now we have to find the average to calculate the, the fixed asset turnover. How do we find the average? Now it will be 350 plus 300 divided by two. You see, we do each of the adjustments first. We arrive at net fixed asset at the beginning of the year. Net fixed asset at the end of the year, we add the two divided by two to get the average net fixed assets. Did I make myself clear? Yes. Okay, now, so that will be 650. Divide that by, by two, you will give us 325. So that 325 will appear on it will appear on the average uh, net fixed asset in the denominator here. And then we know the net sales, then we calculate and get our fixed asset turnover. Everything clear? Okay. Yes. Okay. All right, then we were able to compare the performance of FedEx. How effective is the management of FedEx? We can now see that, yeah, we don't know much, but when we compare, uh, what I did not mention here is that, what of comparing with their close competitors? FedEx close competitor is UPS. Am I right? So UPS uh, 220 is 2.70 in uh, for, for FedEx is 2.16. Who is more effective? Which management is more effective here? Right. Is it UPS. FedEx? Uh, is it FedEx or UPS? UPS. It's UPS. Don't you see? That is how we do the analysis as far as the financial analysis is concerned. So if you can go anywhere and tell somebody, say in 2020, comparatively, UPS has more effective management in terms of fixed asset turnover than FedEx. And then you prove your case. Nobody will, nobody will argue with you because they know that they are talking from authority, from a position of uh, data. You have seen the numbers and you have done your analysis. So nobody will doubt you. Nobody will argue with you. Anybody will argue with you, then we will, we will be like a fool. Okay. So that is uh, uh, looking at asset turnover. You should, most of those turnovers are very important. Or most of those ratios are very important. That is why every aspect we look at, we have to look at those ratios. Then another thing I want you to take note is on um, three. All these ones are things we have already talked about. You know how, by now you should know for how, when you purchase an asset, what are the entries? You should be able to know that by now because I believe in those entries myself. For example, if you 
purchase a fixed asset? What would be the entry? Supposing you purchase a fixed asset for cash. You pay cash for a fixed asset. That is your money in the bank. So you went and charge it and buy. Supposing FedEx, for example, let me see before I, I jump past all those slides. FedEx, for example, purchased, if uh, you know they have aircraft, so they purchased aircraft for two million. How will you record those transactions in terms of assets and um, liability and stockholders? Who knows? So now, in that case, I will let me put it. So we will credit in terms of recording the transaction. We are going to credit cash. Two million, two million, and we are going to debit assets, fixed assets. In this case, aircraft, asset aircraft. We are going to debit asset aircraft two million. So in that case, you can see the debit and credit agree. So they cancel out. So that is how we are going to record it. Cash is reduced by 2 million and fixed asset is increased by 2 million. So those are all what you have in those, those slides. What I want to point you out again now is, uh, is on uh, how to, we should look at the depreciation itself. Depreciation. We look at the depreciation and then you, you learn how to do go ahead with the depreciation value. Applying various cost allocation methods. We have three of them. You have to learn those three and know how to calculate them based on those three. Okay, so looking at depreciation concept is process of allocating cost of building and equipment over their productive lives. Either you call it productive life, useful life, their useful life. And you should know also that equipment will not stay with the company for life, forever. Let me say, for example, car. Some company, they have their own policy. They know already that if they use this car for 10 years, it's enough. I know uh, I'm giving good example because I know of uh, I know of Aramco in uh, Saudi Arabia. Their policy is that they can't use vehicle more than ten years. As soon as it's ten years, that's it. That vehicle is to be disposed. So in that case, there will be disposal of that vehicle equipment. So theirs is ten years. So many companies, some company may say vehicle, a vehicle should not be more than five years. So in any case, we look at balance sheet acquisition costs, costs allocated for that period. We are going, you are going to look at the, how to calculate the depreciation, but assuming you allocate costs, for example, I give an example of $50 allocating costs for each year, $50. So that $50 allocated goes straight to reduce the income. It goes straight to income statement to reduce the income statement as an expense. So that depreciation for the current year goes straight to reduce the income statement. And then each of each year, that depreciation is added year by year, year by year. And the total is posted to the balance sheet to reduce the asset cost. Any question? No question. Okay, let's move on. So depreciation concept is the process of allocating costs, like I said, of building an equipment over productive life or useful life. Systematic and rational method is being used as far as accounting is concerned. They don't allocate costs arbitrarily. Like, for example, I told you that, okay, let's assume it is $50. They don't allocate. But you will look through and see all the depreciation methods. Depreciation is not, it's not a process of determining an asset current market value. That is what you should note. It's not 
that they want to determine the actual market value because at times the net value will will be lower than or maybe greater than the actual cost because the actual cost of the equipment is driven by the market demand and supply that has nothing to do with the depreciation itself in the system okay we've got past this depreciation and expense you can go through that again the adjustment process income and balance sheet we talk about that already okay let's you look at this depreciation method to calculate the depreciation expense there are three pieces of information that are required you must know the, the, the estimated useful life. Useful life is the productive life, the period in which that equipment will last. For example, if the equipment is going to last for 10 years, so the useful life of the equipment will be 10 years. So you must know that useful life to start with. Companies have a very good system of estimating that based on their factory operation based on their factory operation and also the the equipment manufacturers themselves will tell you well using it to produce so 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 quantity of good it will last for five years it will last for 10 years they they know it so you must establish the useful life then also you have to establish the estimated residual value at the end of the assets residual value may not be necessarily be what the asset is to be sold at the end of the useful life based on estimate probably the field that is the value of the asset after the useful life so if they are going to sell this they either sell it at that value or below that value or above that value depending how depending on how the market dictates. And then when you know that, the next thing is for you to know which depreciation method do we want to use. Somewhere in the slide, you will also see the fact that choosing depreciation methods may reduce or increase profit. So like I say, if the motivation of the management is to reduce profit, they may use a particular depreciation method. If it is to increase profit, they may use they may use a particular method. Most companies always maintain two books. And in the United States, they maintain two books. One book is for tax purposes. The other book is for income purposes. That is, they want to declare more income so that the shareholders will be happy. But if you declare more income, come for tax for purposes, they will pay more tax. So for you to reduce the number of their tax, in most cases, they report one based on tax purposes. So in that case, the one they report for tax purposes, probably they use higher depreciation method so that they will charge more money and reduce the profit, hence they will reduce the tax. Any question? Okay, so we have these three methods. I want you to look at them. These three methods, the straight line method, the unit of production, the declining balance method. You have to study them yourself and make sure you get each of them. Very, very important. Those are the three methods of depreciation, the, the, the straight line method, the unit of production, and the declining balance method. A lot of companies use the straight line method, but it still depends on their motivation. It still depends on their motivation. Let's, let's look at the straight line. The straight line, the formula is very straight. Cost minus the residual value. Uh, we have talked about residual value, then divided by the useful life. Or you can see it's multiplied by one all over the useful life. Or 
the best way to do to do it is just say costs less salvage value salvage how much is the salvage value as soon as you get the cost less the salvage value you divide by the useful life of the machine say five years then you should be able to know what the straight line uh, depreciation expense should be and that would be the depreciation expense for each year for the period of, of for the useful life of the machine i always use that simple method supposing we have uh, equipment that is five years five year equipment year one year two year three year four so now you know the useful you know the cost of it you subtract the residual value you divide it by the useful life then you will know the depreciation value for each of those years then you keep charging those depreciation each year and at the end of each year you find what the accumulated depreciation should be uh, sorry professor what is the residual uh, value again okay the residual value is the salvage value uh, that is after five years for example let us look at the car you are driving you are driving your car you bought the car after 10 years probably will you still sell the car the same price you bought it no no so supposing you bought the car say let give example we bought the car maybe um five thousand dollars right okay we bought the car five thousand dollars then 10 years down the road probably you can only sell the car five hundred dollars am i right okay so if you are to sell the car five hundred dollars five hundred is the residual value so this is expected right huh this is expected not uh, actual it may not because be I... actual that is uh, based on uh, real uh, statistical analysis where we expect the residual value to be to hover around the net uh to hover around the net uh, asset value that is the actual value after 10 years we expect it after you do the reduce the precision that is the that is the value you have now so we assume the residual value should tie towards that but at times it's a little, a little bit different but in any case a simple anal analogy is your car after you bought it five thousand today after 10 years you are not expecting you can't sell it ten thousand the same five thousand you either sell it maybe five hundred dollars or one or one thousand the people who buy, who buy, who sell cars, they know how to do it. Because when you go in, you want to trade in that car. They will say, well, uh, after five years, this your car is worth $500. So we'll take it, give you 500. You add it, you take it and reduce the value of the new car. So that is the residual okay. value. Okay. okay. So if we say 500, uh, 5,000 minus 500, that's uh, 450. 4,400, sorry, uh, into the useful life, one over five. Yes. Uh, or one over 10 uh, as a card. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it will be uh, the depreciation cost uh, expense will be 450. Very good. So that means the uh, cost is 500. If you subtract, how much? Okay. How much? Uh, okay. 5,000. How much did you sell it? Residual value 500. was 500. So that means all over the useful life is 10 years, correct? Yeah. Correct? So 500 yes. minus 5,000 5, minus 500 is 4,500. Divide that by 10. So it's 450. So each year, depreciation will be $450. Very easy, mm -hmm. right? So each year, the position is 450. So that means uh, year one, 450. Using straight line method, year two, 450. So year three, 450. 
So if I now ask you, what is the accumulated depreciation in year three? What will you tell me? Again, please. I mean, what is the accumulated? Year one is 450. All of us join hand to calculate this. Year one, depreciation is 450. Year two is 450. Year three is 450. So what is at the end of year three, what is the accumulated depreciation that will go to balance sheet? 1350. Huh? 1350. Very good. 1350. 1350. That will be the accumulated depreciation. So you can see in the balance sheet, we will say 5,000 costs, less accumulated depreciation, 1350. And then we subtract that out. So the net, net asset value or net asset, uh, net uh, fixed asset will be 5,510,976. Five, Four minus one. So that will be 3,650 will be net asset value, net, net fixed asset, or net asset, whatever, net fixed asset. So you can see now with that, we should be able to, if we know the net sales or revenue, if it is a company, we should be able to know their turnover. That is a fixed asset turnover, F-A-T. Fixed asset turnover. So that is uh, for straight line. Let's look at, uh, you can read other examples and then you get it. We have already used more simpler example. Then we look at uh, unit of production. Unit for production is here. Somebody's talking. Sorry, I, uh, I left my mic open. Sorry. Oh, okay. Okay. Here we are looking at uh, divide the depreciation cost minus the residual value by the estimated total production activities level to determine the depreciation unit. So we'll look for a better example here to be able to look at that again, unit of production. Okay. Okay, unit of production. Let me see if I can see something more. Uh, okay, in this case, we are looking at uh, dividing the costs, divide the depreciation cost cost minus residual value. You now know what receiver, receivable value is. And then you divide it by the total production to arrive at the unit, the unit rate. Then whatever, okay, like for example, if you look at the if you look at this, the acquisition of new delivery van, you can see the three years is 100,000. Each year is 30,000, 50,000 for the second year, and 20,000 for the third year. So how do we know? First of all, if you want to use unit of production, you have to find out the rate, unit rate. So now if we subtract first, we subtract the residual value from the costs, because the cost is 62. 500, you can see the residual value is given 2,500. When we subtract that, we divide it by the estimated, estimated uh, number of uh, production. In this case, 100,000. So that gives us 0 0.60 per mile. Then for the first year, for the first year, who can tell us what the depreciation will be? The depreciation 18,000. Huh? 
18,000. 18,000, very good, because you are multiplying 0 0.6 by 30. What of the second year? 18,000, yes? So that I will not go to throw that slide again. What of the second year? What is the what of the second year? The second year was 50,000 miles. What will it be? 30,000. Huh? 30,000. How did you get that? Uh, the, um, uh, the unit rate multiplied by uh, the number of miles, 50,000. So the, uni the, yeah, the unit rate is 0 0.6, okay, uh -huh. into uh, 50,000. Very good. That gives you how much? 30,000. 30,000, okay. Uh, okay. It should be in the slide. I don't know if that is, if it's correct. I can also check before I go to the slide. I always like us to do things practically ourselves. 30,000, no, 50 times 0.6. Very good, 30,000. Somebody else should tell us something about the last one. What would be the depreciation for the third year? Somebody else, not the person who I've just spoken. Somebody else should tell us. Repeat the professor. Repeat the question. Oh, okay. In this case, we are trying to calculate unit of production. Using unit of production method, we are trying to calculate the depreciation for year one, year two, year three for this equipment that was purchased by uh, FedEx. They purchased a new delivery van. You know, their job is to deliver. They purchased a new delivery van and total year value production is 100,000 miles. You have driven 100,000 miles for three years. That is how it's projected. We have the costs to be 62,500 of the van. Then, the estimated residual value is 2005. We know all that. So we're able to calculate the unit uh, value. Me and my dental friend there, we have calculated the first the first year depreciation is 18,000. Second year, we also try is 30,000. Then my question is, what is the depreciation for the third year for this delivery bar? I've, I've, I've done a, a big work. I've explained it all over again. So I want to know what is the depreciation value for this van? The gentleman that asked that asked the question. Yes. Nobody. Uh, twelve thousand. Uh, yeah, twelve thousand. It's twelve thousand. Is there anybody who want to know how we got twelve thousand? So everybody know how we got the twelve thousand. We multiply the unit per mile by twenty thousand. We arrive at twelve thousand. So now my question is, is, at the end of the third year, what is the accumulated depreciation? At the end of the third year, what is accumulated depreciation? At the end of the third year, what is accumulated depreciation? 60,000. Very good. Because 18,000 year one, 30,000 year two, 12,000 year three, add the three, that become accumulated depreciation. So that is what we will post to the balance sheet. So I will say delivery van in the balance sheet, delivery van at costs. At costs is what? At costs is what? 62,500. 62, yes. Uh, 62,500. 
500. Very good. Less accumulated. And now we are reporting it in balance sheet. Less accumulated depreciation and accumulated for the year three is 60,000. So net fixed asset, as far as this delivery van is concerned, is what? 2,500. 2,500. Who can tell us what have we, we have been able to arrive at here? The residual value. The... the residual value. Very, very good. The residual value. You can see. When we subtract the accumulated depreciation, we arrive at the residual value, and the residual value was 2,500. That, that's the residual value. So at this point, we are thinking of now replacing this van. You have done too much. So we want to replace. But if the van is possible of still producing after the useful life, we don't mind. But probably the useful mile is the useful life is three years or hundred thousand miles. In this case, the useful life is three years or hundred thousand miles. We can replace it, or if we can still be useful, the company would don't mind. In this case, they are reaping the benefit of their investment very very well. Okay, so that is. Uh, uh, that will be the unit of production methods. Who has question? Okay, no question. So we will look at the last one, the what we call the double declining method. Double declining is still the same thing as a, a straight line method, but in this case, we multiply apply the outcome by two and reduce the balance by that amount. Double declining method, make it possible for the company to quickly recover the life of the, to quickly recover the cost. So double declining is like you see it here, cost minus accumulated depreciation, you multiply it by two to arrive at depreciation expense. So in this case, you are doubling it. Mm. Okay, every other thing, uh, you will look at that. Let everybody look at uh, each of those three methods and study them and then as try as much as possible to finish up these slides because we have touched all the points that I wanted us to touch, how to handle the depreciation. And then I've discussed the ethical issue on depreciation on uh, acquisition of capital expenditure. How to, how to differentiate capital expenditure from, from uh, expense. Expenses should go straight to income statement. Capital expenditure should go to the balance sheet and depreciated assets each year. So we should be able to know that. And then I told you something about an ethical issue whereby you have large expenses. You have a very large expenses. Instead of going, posting it to income statement, Somebody is posting it to and uh, classifying it as a capital expenditure. And I told you Professor, that. Is, yes. Uh, can you explain this double declining balance method? Because I, I, I'm trying to run the number, mm. but it's it's not. I'm not getting it. Okay. okay. Let me, the let me the see accumulated depreciation. I'm looking at the example itself. Okay. Okay, at the beginning of the year, FedEx purchased equipment for 62. Uh, the equipment has an uh, estimated useful life of three years 
at the estimated residual value of, of uh, 500. Then cost minus accumulated depreciation, multiply that by two useful life that gives you that. So in this case, what is the cost? The cost is 62,500. Yeah. For the okay for year one in dump, uh, using the straight line you use the straight line method. What was the depreciation for the year one? If we use uh, the, the first one, it will be cost uh, sixty two five hundred minus two five hundred. Uh, what was the depreciation? I don't have it. I don't have. I was thinking you guys got that. I don't have it here. What was the depreciation using the straight line method? We calculated the position for the equipment. 20,000. Was it 20,000? Yeah, let me see. 6,000. Was it 20,000? Yes. No, I no, I mean, the... using the straight line method. This is a straight line method. Okay, use the straight line method first. The first thing you use for straight line methods, okay, 62,500 minus what is accumulated depreciation? And uh, what is uh, the residual value, value is what? Is 2,500. So now you got 60,000. Divide by three, which is the three divide years. Divide by the useful life, multiplied by, by two. So no, that means that, huh? divide by the number of okay. years. The number of years, when you divide by the number of years, what do you get? It's 20,000. 20,000. Okay, the next year, the next year, it will be 20,000 again. Then the next year will be 20,000. That is using straight line method, correct? Yes. Okay, the double declining, the first year you charge 20,000. If you subtract that from uh, the cost, that oh, would be okay. Okay, subtracted no, from the cost. And then the accumulated will be 40,000. And then the last year will be 20,000 plus. So that is how double declining works. So you will do go to the for your textbook, there are a lot of examples there for the three methods. So the first thing I want you to drive home before I leave is uh, number one, you should know how to calculate the net fixed asset turnover. And now we know the significance of net fixed asset turnover. Or maybe I move, let me drive a little bit down. You know, the first thing you do is you have to know how accumulate, how to, how to acquire uh, assets. Asset is not an, an expense that you can just go and put it in an income statement. We have to know the difference between what goes to income statement and what goes to what goes to balance sheet. That is the first thing you should know. And um, if you look at one of the slides there, there was a company here, uh, I think Enron, they call them, they were doing a different type of accounting, which was un unethical. I keep mentioning it because it's very, very important. Instead of charging, instead of charging expenses to income statement, what were they, what were they doing? Mounting to billions of dollars, they were classifying them as capital expenditure. If you classify big uh, things like that as capital expenditure, you know only the precision you would you charge to the income statement. So because of that, they were they were having huge uh, profit, and and auditors were there. They but they go to there. They look at the books. They say it's okay. Price Waterhouse. But at the point, it was discovered that instead of them charging expenses to income statement, they were charging it to capital expenditure. So that is one thing you should know. So acquisition, you should know that acquisition of assets will involve cost, installation, 
uh, labor overhead and so forth. Put together, give you what we call uh, fixed asset for that particular asset. Just like the example I used, acquire, acquiring an uh, uh, aircraft. So that is number one. Number two, you have to know how do you handle a turnover, a fixed asset turnover? How do you calculate it? What is the implication of the numbers? You have calculated it. What is the implication? That I have dwelled on it. You now know what it is. The only thing that is missing there, I want you as a very maybe small exam, um, um, assignment, you take note of it. L looking at uh, look uh, looking at FedEx, I want you also to look at what the industry average is for 2020, 2020, and also find the fixed assets turnover for 2021 for FedEx, and find also for. Uh, um, um, find also for the competitors. Um, find also for the competitors we did in the this thing, and for twenty 2020 twenty and twenty twenty one, and then look at the industry average and find uh, and look at it and let me know by response. A very short uh, note. That uh, and tell me the, how efficient is uh, FedEx compared to their competitor and compared to the industry. That would be the example, the 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 assignment you have for this for this very uh, chapter. So now the next thing you do is you have to know those three methods of depreciation. And how do you handle the precision? How do you post the precision? Each year, the precision is posted to the income statement. So you have to know that. Accumulated is taken into the balance sheet. Whatever you report if eventually on the balance sheet should be the net of uh, accumulated depreciation. So that is one thing you should also note. I think with that, then go through the uh, time note generally, and then if there is any question, you have to post it to me. Otherwise, next week, we will focus more on the review. I couldn't do the review. I couldn't prepare the questions this time, so I will prepare questions for us to review uh, next week. Then upper week, we will take our uh, quiz number two. Uh, excuse me, Professor. Go ahead. Uh, you know, this week we have uh, uh, some holiday. And yes. uh, to be honest, I was not able to uh, upload the assign as assignment for. Mm -hmm. So is it possible to extend the period for, uh, for it? But I've extended the period to 15th of uh, July. Is that, is that not enough? Uh, one minute, sir. I've extended it to 15th of July. Yeah, one, one minute, sir. I'm, I'm checking that. Okay. okay for the sure. assignment number four. Yes. Uh, it, yes. Well, it is expired. It is has locked Yes, yes. It's Yes, it's extended till 16, yes. Okay, that's okay. fine. Okay. Thank you so, so much. So I, I don't recognize that. And then that is why me too, I'm not feeling well. But then we fall in line with, because you are doing some celebration, that's okay. Next week, instead, we'll do review. If we are, if we finish review on time, then we will uh, we will move on to the next uh, uh, next lectures. But then next week, we'll do review. After review, we move on to the next lecture. By that time, I will be able to fix our uh, this. Then upper week, I will post your your quiz number two. After quiz number two, only maybe one or two assignments, then we will be ready for the final exam. Any other question for me? Thank you, Professor. Okay. If there is no questions, 
good luck and uh, let me know if uh, you can always send me a WhatsApp. Yes. I will always attend to WhatsApp too. Yes. All right. Uh, sir, what all about the quiz too? Huh? Uh, what, the, what all about? What for the quiz too that you're seeing? Yeah, What's quiz two. I said we'll do the quiz two. Uh, I said quiz two, we'll do the review next week. Next week, Sunday, we'll do the okay. review for quiz two. I couldn't do it. I've been sick all through myself, um, even up till today. I just say I must come to this class today. If not, I wouldn't have been here. Okay. So quiz two, we do the review okay. next week. And it will be, I think, about three or four chapters. Three or four chapters. Before then, I'll make an announcement on the module so that you know what we are going to look at and, and review. And then you know what question you should expect on uh, quiz number two. Any other question? Then how about the assignments, sir? Uh, the industry average. When will be the job? You are you are tripping off. Sir, when will be the job? Ask when the question will again. The for the assignment about the failed industry. Huh? Sir, when will be the due on the assignment about the FedEx industry average? In the, you mean the industrial average? Yes. Uh, FedEx, when is what is FedEx? I, get, I told you that everything you go, either you go to EGA or you go to the, the company itself, or you go to the company itself, you should be able to get their get their financial and uh, go to the the side that says corporate corporate affairs if you log on today on FedEx, go to oh. their corporate section investment section some company call it investment section or corporate section you will see the uh you will see their industry at times they post the industry the industry data and theirs but when you go there you should be able to calculate uh, oh. their turnover for 2000, because the turnover we have yes. here is 20, is 2020. So the turnover, the, you should have, you should have uh, from 10K ten, for 2021, so that you'll be able, either you go to their website is there, or you go to EGA and download their 10K and, and be able to calculate their net asset turnover. Then from there, you will see the industry compared with the industry. Maybe instead of picking a particular competitor, maybe we pick another one, any other competitors. If we don't find the competitors, at least a competitor is company that operate within the same industry. So you look at that competitors, pick their numbers, calculate their numbers as well if you don't have it. But for 2021, if you go probably they have already calculated their numbers. But if they don't, you should do the calculations and then do the comparison and then tell me how efficient is the management. Okay, so, now sure. so not... we'll submit it in order. So submit it as a Microsoft Word, not more than half a page, doing the calculation and then telling me the the manage how efficient the management is compared to other years you can include the ones we have on the slide because there we have 2018 19 and 20. add 21 to it and then tell me 22 has not ended we have to be more practical and we are using live live numbers so we are not looking at test book as per se 100 percent okay If there is no okay, question, I have to, yeah, yes. Yes. If there is no more question, I have to run. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor. Okay. Thank you, sir. Get well soon. Thank you very much. Thank you. I will. Okay. All right.